from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Air Force Base Esterplatz in Cape Town houses the South African Air Force's maritime aviation assets, which include one of the most modern and sophisticated aircraft in today's Air Force. Keith Campbell recently visited the base. Eisterplatz is home to two flying squadrons, numbers 22 and 35, which support the South African Navy and patrol the country's coast, guarding against poaching and pollution, undertaking search and rescue, and now assisting neighboring countries against piracy. 22 Squadron is the country's maritime helicopter unit, which flies its aircraft off the Navy ships, as well as on overland operations. It operates two types of helicopter, the Oryx and the Lynx. I spoke to the officer commanding 22 Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Willy van Aswegen, and Lynx Flight Commander Major Gees Basson. Lieutenant Colonel van Aswegen talks about special equipment and training for their mission. Uh, we do employ special equipment uh, in the hoisting, in the rescue environment. We also use uh, night visual goggles, night vision equipment to assist with the roles. Uh, training on both aircraft, uh, we start with qualified helicopter pilots. Uh, we do have a special maritime conversion course where we train the people in special skills where they acquire special competency to be used in the maritime environment. But what makes the aircraft very unique is that uh, since the disappearance of the WASAP helicopter many years ago, uh, the South African Navy have lost the, uh, the capability, the air capability working with frigates in, in the maritime war environment. So the Lynx uh, is obviously an extension of the, uh, the, the frigates as part of the um, maritime warfare capability. So what it actually does is the aircraft is very um, uniquely built to operate off small ships uh, in the harsh environment in terms of where ships uh, pitch and roll very much. But uh, what is stuck on the aeroplane as the platform is actually what matters. And you've got to understand that they could have stuck that on any, any particular aircraft type, so, but the Lynx is so suited to small ships that they selected the Lynx. So what you will see on the aircraft is uh, the main capability towards uh, extending the capability of the frigate is the radar that is uh, on the aircraft with which uh, the ship can uh, launch the Lynx and then the Lynx can do a surface picture, a compile a complete surface picture and relay that information through data link back to the ship. Uh, so it's a very precise, secure method of uh, transferring uh, information. And then identifying whatever we look at, uh, you can identify day and night uh, through an EOS system. It's called the Electronic Optical Sighting System. And in addition to that, that makes it very unique is the electronic support measures that's uh, on the aircraft, which uh, gives us the capability of uh, passively identifying um, any uh, threats uh, that's on the surface. The 35 Squadron is Eisterplatz's fixed wing unit and flies by far the oldest aeroplane in the Air Force's inventory, the C-47 Dakota. The youngest example in the squadron's service is 66 years old. Officer commanding 35 Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Kerry van der Merwe, explains the role of his unit. Okay, the squadron operates uh, 11 C-47 TPs, which is Dakotas, and uh, my, our main role is to fly maritime patrol or maritime surveillance. And then we also use the aircraft in a search and rescue role. We've got a transport role. Um, we use the aircraft for uh, navigator training for ATA navigation school. We also use the aircraft as, as an onboard command and control aircraft. And uh, also we have an electronic warfare version of the aircraft that does electronic surveillance in all this uh, electronic spectrum. Other news making headlines this week include Avenge consolidating its water activities into a new company. A BUSA-led forum seeks fair inclusion of women in new South African policies. And anti-corruption is the core focus for the UN Global Compact, with more South African groups signing up. 
Avinch has formed a new company called Avinch Water, which CEO Roger Jardine says will house all of the JSE-listed entity's aspirations for the water markets, especially in the acid mine drainage and desalination industries. Avinch Water is really the uh, expression of where we as Avinch would like to take our water business. We have built the largest desalination plant in Southern Africa. We are doing um, acid mine drainage projects in Imlasini, where we are treating 20 megalitres of water and that's expanding. Um, and we feel the time has come for us to aggregate our water expertise into a, an offering to the market. The average water is the way we would like to go. So um, given the growth that we foresee there, we um, our acid mine drainage uh, work is increasing in South Africa. We're now doing um, uh, work for optimum coal and also starting to sell mobile units uh, in South Africa and also looking at the Australian market. Even though South Africa has one of the most progressive constitutions as far as promoting gender equality goes, it still has some way to go in closing the gap between policy statements and the actual implementation thereof influential female speakers said at a Business Unity South Africa conference. When we look at women and we look at economic empowerment, the tendency is to look at women on boards or in executive positions. But we need to ask if this is enough. I certainly don't think so. Women are 51.3% of our population. They are 44.8% of the labour force. And a significant number of South African households are female-headed. Women still tend to be in the lower paid and less skilled jobs in the economy. And one of the key issues for many women, one, food security, food on the table, and two, education. Those have to be critical factors that enable women to advance and to ensure that they have the wherewithal to, to support and provide. From 2011 to 2014, the major focus of the United Nations Global Compact, which focuses on sustainable business promotion, will be to fight corruption. We want to create a platform now and, you know, to start fighting corruption together. Bringing all the other actors that are already there. I know Brusa is there, I know uh, there are others. But we now want to bring everybody together. Under the platform of the UN, we depend on NBI to come up with a sectoral you know, issue that you want to address in terms of fighting corruption in this, you know, in, in this country. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy. Led by Martin Crema, Mining Weekly's bureaus in Perth, Johannesburg and Toronto deliver unrivaled global coverage of the resources industry and the company shaping it. Crema Media's Mining Weekly for mining news around the clock.